This is BBC One, and now we go over to the Tomorrow's World team for special coverage of the launch of the American Space Shuttle. Back in 1981, millions of people around the world watched a new dawn of space travel as Space Shuttle Columbia, also known as STS-1, launched from Cape Canaveral's launch pad A on the 12th of April. A further 134 missions would take place, but it would only take this one mission to spark the imagination of one seven-year-old boy from the north of England. The launch was a really big thing and special programmes such as Tomorrow's World covered it on the BBC in great length and detail. Now, I was too young to know about these special programmes at the time or just how important this first space shuttle launch was. However, my parents were kind enough to plonk me in front of the TV to watch the launch on that evening's news. I can clearly remember being in awe of this huge hulking crap. I had seen rocket launches before for sure, but this wasn't a rocket, this was a spaceship. A real life spaceship with wings and a windscreen at the front, just like the ones I'd seen in the science fiction movies of the time. And it was taking off and flying into outer space in front of my very eyes. And just like that, it left an indelible mark on my imagination for years to come. Fast forward a few years and a trip to a local supermarket with my dad would lead me to discovering this. Space Shuttle. A journey into space on the Commodore 64. This could be the opportunity that I never thought I was going to get, an opportunity to pilot the space shuttle. Yes, in 1984 Activision released this game on the Commodore 64, Atari, ZX Spectrum and the MSX and Amstrad and Apple II in 1985. The game itself comes in this big cardboard box reminiscent of the original Atari 2600 cartridges and as if I needed any persuasion, the first paragraph on the back of the box got me hooked. Before you is a marvellous opportunity to pilot an extremely authentic shuttle mission. Sounds and graphics explode off screen with all the fire and fury of a real life liftoff. It's a flight that will call upon your skills, your inner strength and your mind. Join the journey and discover your own ingenuity along the way. Simply put, I was sold. You see, in my opinion, this is such an interesting game. It's the first game of its kind. This game came out right when Activision were making games like River Raid, Pitfall, Beam Rider, Frostbite and smack bang in the middle of these arcade classics is a space shuttle simulator. Anyway, let's take a closer look. As I said, the game comes in this big box style and has Activision's hologram of authenticity on the side, just to remind you that this is authentic Activision. Inside comes a cassette and two separate flight manuals, one in English and one in French. The 30 page flight manual is full of interesting details from launch checklists, docking sequences to landing summary. The flight manual also acts as a full cheat sheet to help you solve any problems that your flight may have along its mission. It's actually a nice little read. The game also includes this cool little overlay for the function keys which I always thought was a nice touch. Now this game was the brainchild of Stephen Kitchen, a software designer who originally started out as an engineer and inventor who was involved in the development of digital watches, electronic calculators and early electronic games no less. An engineer who went on to make video games and where have we seen that before? Oh yeah! What makes this game really interesting isn't the fact that it's the first space shuttle flight sim or the fact that it came out right in the middle of Activision's plethora of arcade classics. No, the real interesting thing is that this game's original release was on the Atari 2600 using an 8K cartridge and called for some real original thinking to be able to bring his vision to life. 
Here's Stephen Kitchen in 1984 explaining his creation. Okay, you've got Space Shuttle up here, and uh, give us a demonstration of how this works. Well, this is an automatic demo flight we're going to fly. Uh, this is a complete Space Shuttle mission from launch to landing. This is actually themed after the STS-2 flight back in November of 1981. We're starting off now at Cape Kennedy in the morning. The clouds are rolling by, the sun is coming up, and we're doing our countdown now. Now at T minus four seconds, we're going to turn our main engines on. You're going to see the thrust indicators at the top of the screen there moving along. There we go. At T plus three seconds, the solid rocket boosters are going to turn on, and we're going to go through the clouds and off the pad. And there we go. Now, the aspect of the game here is to fly the space shuttle successfully into a 210 nautical mile orbit, doing all the control functions that an astronaut would really do, setting your yaw and your pitch, keeping on a trajectory line. Uh, at 26.2 nautical miles, the solid rocket boosters will jettison off. Now, this is a very important point of accuracy, is there's a yellow flash. There we go. Uh, this is something that wasn't noted until STS-1, when the first astronauts went up, that this actually happened. I had to find all of these details out about what you would experience if you were inside of the space shuttle and you were doing the flying, so that when you play this game, you feel like you've actually flown. Steve, it seems to me the incredible thing is this game is running on an Atari 2600, not a computer. How do you squeeze all of this into that unit? Well, it takes a lot of time programming, coding. Um, you have to model the universe as you feel it should really be, and then you have to find how you can fit it all in piece by piece. You start off with a basic mission, and then you add features and you add the functions all along the way. When I finished the game, I was not happy with it, and I had an additional list of 146 separate items I wanted to put in that I still felt were important. Uh, I, I spent an additional three months finishing those off and getting them all in. I wanted this to be absolutely accurate and absolutely complete. And you know, it you is. put this all inside of a, how big a ROM? It's so an 8K cartridge. 8K cartridge. <laughs> That's an incredible amount of... Uh, it took 13 months of programming, <laughs> and a lot of that time was spent putting it all together. Now, we've just achieved orbit. There's the Earth's room rolling underneath. The external tank will jettison. There it goes. Being a space shuttle sim-type game, there's one thing about this game I can definitely remember. It was hard. It's definitely not a game where you can just wing it, in my opinion. It's a game where you are rewarded for reading the instructions to learn the checklists and sequences to enable you to get past that phase of the mission. The launch, for example, you need to start the engines during the countdown and you need to ignite the engines in the last three seconds. Looking back, I never fully completed this game and I still can't today. However, I can get her off the pad into space, I can land her, but I could not complete the docking sequence. But that didn't matter because it was such a nice game to play. And it's probably responsible for getting me interested in flight sims, to be honest. Some years later, in 1992, Vector Graphics would make Shuttle and take Space Shuttle simulators to a whole new level of detail and realism a game that Computer Gaming World would applaud for the level of detail accomplished. However, it was Space Shuttle A Journey Into Space that I will always have a soft spot for. Probably because I was so young when I first saw the Space Shuttle launch and when I first saw this game in the shop. It opened up a whole new type of game to me, one where you don't move a small sprite across the screen shooting everything or any other typical type of arcade platform game. That's probably why I enjoy so many types of sim games today, from exciting racing games to atmospheric World War II submarine simulators like Silent Service. One final cool thing about the game was the fact that if you did manage to complete the mission to a high enough standard enough times, you could get recognised as an elite space shuttle commander. And by taking a picture of the final screen and sending it to Activision, they would recognise your efforts by sending you the official space shuttle mission patch and quite literally, earn your wings. So did you ever play space shuttle? Did you ever get further than me and complete the whole mission? And finally, did anyone ever earn their wings? I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel, that way you'll always be notified when I make new videos. And giving the video a thumbs up always makes it worthwhile. 
Until next time, thank you and goodbye.